So we've just talked about uh, the ICON grant. The ICON grant is also can be used in association with a uh, grant program called EDF, the Entrepreneur Development Fund. The EDF program is again an ACT government program to allow entrepreneurs to engage an external consultant usually someone with domain expertise or useful networks, to spend around 10 days with an individual entrepreneur. Those 10 days don't have to be over a two week period, they can be over an extended period of time. And again, it is like for like funding. So if you do engage a consultant, half of their time will be paid for by the EDF program. Again, you have to formally apply for it, there's a formal application process, it is milestone driven and usually the funding is paid uh, in tranches, so there may be two or three tranches for pre-agreed milestones during the engagement. Angela chose not to use EDF. The next uh, a grant program that uh, Angela could potentially look at. We've moved forward now to September 2012. We've proven the technology and we've got to a point where um, she wants to take this further. And so she wants to apply for the DTF, the Discovery Translation Fund. As I mentioned, this is a, a program that is funded out of ANU Connect Ventures which is the venture capital arm of uh, the uh, Australian National University. And grants range from 25 dollars to $50,000. The good news about this is it does not require matching funding and the grant is not repayable. So if you are successful with this, this is extra capital that you don't have to match that is uh, applied to pre-agreed milestones to move your idea forward. Typically, funded projects uh, look at things like technically de-risking an idea, um, so proof of concept, protecting your intellectual property, and early stage commercial development. This fits very nicely with where um, Angela is with Eventmate. This is a perfect uh, follow-on to the ICON grant and EDF grant, even though she chose not to apply for that, the DTF is a next logical grant program as she continues that journey through the valley of death. I would speculate that uh, um, some of her milestones might be to win three customers, to start trials, uh, proof of concept trials with two or three of those customers, and to get feedback from the application of her um, event make platform in the market. That's a typical sort of milestones that you would expect from this type of uh, grant program. So let's uh, again move forward. One of the other things, this is a federal grant program that everybody should be aware of, certainly every entrepreneur, and it's called the R&D incentive. It used to be called the R&D tax credit. And it's a federal government program, it's administered by the ATO, the Australian Tax Office. And what it does is it allows you, as long as you have correctly categorised research and development activities, and it complies with the R&D incentive rules, and you can find those rules on the, the government's website, you can apply for a 45% refund 45% uh, um, refund in the dollar for complying expenditure. I, I stress that very, very carefully because the activity has to comply with the rules. The benefit of this is obviously you get that money back. The disadvantage is that you spend the money and sometimes you're spending that money 16 months in advance of when you actually get the money back. So effectively you spend the money, you finish the financial year, you submit your tax return, you submit your claim back to the ATO and then after a period of review they pay the um, complying money back to you. This is a very um, worthwhile program that helps early stage companies preserve cash and um, um, increase cash flow especially during difficult times. 
So it's a program that is well worth uh, consideration. In Angela's case, I would say that this is extremely valuable because her research and development, remember she's going to engage a developer, those costs would comply for this sort of uh, rebate. And so she should be tracking the expenditure that she is making to the developer and then at the end of the financial year submit a, a claim to get 45 cents in the dollar back. Angela's getting to a point now where she's now got her product, it's in the market, she's got some early what I would call trialists, proof of concept trials. They are paying trials but they're not paying at commercial rates. And now she's looking to sort of stimulate her business and grow her business. So she's got through the valley of death but she's still not quite at break even. How is she going to accelerate her growth? Well, she could apply to Commercialisation Australia. Again, this is a federal agency, not a state-based agency. It's administered by Oz Industry. The program has been in existence for about three years, and it's an extremely successful program for entrepreneurs. There are four levels of funding that you can apply for with Commercialisation Australia. You can start off with a skills and knowledge grant, these are typically up to $50,000 to bring in specialist advice um, to help you with your journey towards commercial success. The second component of Commercialisation Australia is experienced executives. You can apply for up to $350,000 to bring in, this is per annum, to bring in an um, experienced chief executive or IT manager or CIO to help you to stimulate your growth. The programs that I personally uh, like are the Proof of Concept and the Early Stage Commercialisation Grants. The Proof of Concept Grant ranges from $50,000 to $250,000 and again helps you go from a product that has been developed that has been in very early trials with your uh, customer audience or your market segment and validates that either with a new market or increases the validation in uh, an existing market. That could be, by the way, validating a market not just here in Australia. You could use it to validate uh, the potential of your product in overseas markets. And that's called proof of concept. And finally, you've got early stage commercialisation, which is the largest part of uh, commercialisation Australia. And you can apply for between 50 thousand dollars and two million dollars to help you very um, aggressively stimulate your uh, commercial uh, market adoption. These range in times. You, you could have a, a program or a fund that has as short as a year. Um, sometimes it could be multi-years in terms of the, the applicability of these grants. The process for securing commercialization is merit-based it is like for like capital, so you have to match the funding, and it is very competitive. So every stage of this is competitive. Typically you have a local Commercialisation Australia case manager. We have three that are operating here in the ACT, and those individuals will take your um, application, work with you to validate the uh, credence and credibility of it, and eventually get it to a point of submission. It then goes to a board, the Commercialisation Australia board, who will then either um, accept that this uh, uh, has merit and it gets approved or reject it. And typically they're rejected simply because um, of the number of applicants. If you've got through to a point of being submitted to the board, your case manager is happy to support this application and, and that's part of their job to make sure that you're ready for the application. So again Commercialisation Australia very good program you do have to match the capital that you're applying for. The final point with CA is that it is a non-repayable grant. Uh, it started off in the early years actually the early stage commercialisation actually was a repayable loan but uh, about a year ago they changed the change the rules, this is a non-recourse loan and so if you are fortunate enough to secure 
an ESC grant, it is particularly valuable because it doesn't have to be repaid. Any questions? My question surrounds more of these more of these grants. What what is you know what's in it for the universities and for commercialisation Australia to say that these grants don't need to be repaid? Good question. If you think about uh, the objectives of each of these agencies, they are looking to identify unique ideas, talented entrepreneurs, future businesses that may sustain the growth of our country. And so um, these entities realise that there has to be some incentives to allow entrepreneurs to go on that journey. And what they get out of it is they get visibility, early visibility into talented entrepreneurs with good ideas that have global potential. So I would argue that that's the purpose of this, to fund future industries.